Welcome to Battletech Faction Briefings. Today we are looking at one of my favorite minor factions. This is my first video that isn't focused on a mercenary unit. Sort of. The Knights of the Inner Sphere are a Free Worlds League military unit created by and serving Captain General Thomas Merrick, and are short-lived, just like the Knights of the Round Table they take inspiration from. However, they also led to the creation of a mercenary unit, Romanov's Crusaders, which I will also be covering in this discussion. While the Knights of the Inner Sphere are an FWLM unit, they have their own code of conduct, their own paint scheme, and unlike most Leaguer military units, they take orders directly from the Captain General, and they exist to show mech warriors that they could strive for better than being the pilot of a death machine. Romanov's Crusaders were a unit of non-league mech warriors who wanted to join the Knights. Their story is tied into that of the Knights, but they were usually off fighting their own battles. The Knights have a very unique symbol. It is a hand stretching out of the water holding a sword, a reference to the Lady of the Lake from the Legend of King Arthur. The emblem would be painted onto the shoulder of the battle mechs the Knights used. The paint scheme seems to have some contradictions as some sources say white is the main color and others say red. The agreed upon motif is that the first unit of Knights uses gold accents while the second regiment uses silver. As for Romanov's Crusaders, they have an elaborate symbol of a knight riding a horse and carrying a flaming sword layered upon a shield. The symbol is placed onto the chest of the mechs in a location where the heart should be. The colors are reminiscent of the knights, but are just different enough to be their own design. They use a dull silver for the main color with gold accents. While both units didn't last very long, they do have distinct designs that did stand out on the battlefield. They would also look unique when being used on the tabletop, especially alongside other FWL forces. The history of the Knights of the Inner Sphere is a short one, lasting only about 21 years. However, they do have several appearances in the novels. Romanov's Crusaders, on the other hand, are mostly a sourcebook footnote. However, if you want to avoid spoilers for either unit, skip to the timecode on the screen. In 3055, Captain General Thomas Merrick came up with a different take on the construction of a mech force. Thomas Merrick was a fan of history and a collector of artifacts, including the original printings of books. One of the books that he loved was Le Mort de Arthur by Thomas Mallory, written in 1470. The story goes from the youth to the death of King Arthur, and covers the adventures of the famous king and his Knights of the Round Table. The story inspired Thomas Merrick to make a unit developed to emulate the legendary knights in the 31st century. After a discussion with Paul Masters and a few other key advisors, Thomas Merrick made efforts to gather the most honorable and skilled mech warriors to make up the unit. Once gathered, the mech warriors had to swear loyalty to Thomas Merrick as their liege lord. Each warrior was given the title of Sir or Dame and expected to follow a chivalrous code of conduct. However, more than just Free Worlds League mech warriors showed up. Those foreign mech warriors created a political problem for Thomas Merrick. His solution was to have the foreign knights serve as mercenaries and took one of the knight's battalion commanders, Crispin Romanov, and made him the commander of Romanov's Crusaders. While they swore loyalty to Thomas Merrick just like the knights, they were technically their own independent unit so that political opponents in the Free Worlds League wouldn't get their feathers ruffled at Thomas Merrick making a private army. Not long after the establishment of the Knights of the Inner Sphere, Sir Paul Masters was sent out to Gibson to deal with a rebellion that had grown out of hand. His efforts led to a battle with the Word of Blake militia 
and the second Regulan Hussars. Despite the odds, the Knights won, even when attacked by tactical nukes. It was a moral victory more than a military one, as they stood up for the people of Gibson and showed the value of the Knights to the rest of the Free World's League. Meanwhile, Romanov's Crusaders were not having such a good run of things. Their unit was made up of both veterans and green soldiers, unlike the completely elite Knights. Thus, they had to take up specialized training to make the unit work. While training on Connacht, a dispute between the 18th Merrick Militia and some Crusaders led to a brawl. This hot-tempered nature is also why many of the Crusaders preferred to work in small units or alone as duelists. The Knights were used as a garrison force on several border planets, not only to keep the peace, but to also avoid problems if possible. This took place on Epsilon, Rochelle, and Nestor. No major military engagements occurred on any of these worlds. In 3057, a group of soldiers masquerading as the Knights pulled raids on several planets. A team of Knights, led by professional gambler Duncan Kalma and Sir Rod Train, went across the galaxy trying to find out who was doing this and why. This led the team to discover a descendant of Stefan Ameris on New St. Andrews. Apparently, he had been bringing in several low-tier mercenary forces to function as the New Republican Guards, the starting point for his army. He planned to sow chaos throughout the Inner Sphere so that he could easily take over. It took great sacrifices, but the team was able to win the day and stop the threat of Stefan Ameris VII before he could rise to power. After their victory, the renown of the Knights grew, and by 3058, the Knights were split into two regiments. That same year, the Jade Falcons attacked Coventry, and Catherine Steiner Davian asked Thomas Merrick for assistance. He sent the Knights, but sadly, they did not get the chance to face Clan Jade Falcon in honorable combat. The problem with the Falcons was solved by Victor Steiner Davian before they could arrive. As the Knights grew in prestige, the Crusaders had found their own niche. They took up missions in the periphery, hunting pirates, fighting criminals, and helping the people. Despite being from the Inner Sphere, they earned a positive reputation in the frontiers of civilization. By request of Morgan Hask Davian, the Knights joined Task Force Serpent. This was an operation to find the clan homeworlds and attack the world of Huntress to fully shut down the clan Smoke Jaguar War Machine. The first regiment was sent, while the second was still being built up. Thus, the second knights served on Epsilon, escorting organizations, offering humanitarian aid to the Lyran Alliance. The role of the knights in Task Force Serpent was to be the conscience of the military force and prevent war crimes from occurring. They also helped in training soldiers to deal with clan tactics. This included a practice skirmish with the Iridani Light Horse. The 1st Regiment's biggest battle was on Huntress, where they took 50% casualties alongside Kingston's Legionnaires, who took 70% losses. They succeeded due to reinforcements from the Comguard 2nd Division. When the clan survivors that were chased out of the Inner Sphere during Operation Bulldog arrived, the Knights and several other units played defense. They held the line near Lake Osis to assist in the retreat of other battered SLDF forces. By the time the Smoke Jaguars were repelled, the Knights were down to only a quarter of their original forces. The 1st Regiment took years to recover from the war on Huntress, and were not up to full strength until 3067. During this time of recovery, the Knights were used to fight the Lyran Alliance attacks on the Free Worlds League in the late 3060s. In 3068, the Knights were called back to Atreus for review, despite the fact that the battles against the Lyran Alliance were ongoing. 
This review also incorporated a parade. During that parade, they were attacked by the word of Blake. Chemical nerve agents were used to poison the knights as a plan to win without a fight. The knights' mechs were not set up with the proper filtration systems, and many knights died in moments. Upon realizing what was going on, several knights tried to escape, but they were slowed down by the local police and the 8th Free World's Legionnaires. This led to even more deaths amongst the knights. Upon hearing the news, Romanov's crusaders abandoned their posting on Connacht. From there they went to Oriente to help defend the planet and, in the process, receive upgrades. On Atreus, the surviving knights started a guerrilla war against the Blakists. They kept fighting for years, even after being hunted by the 8th Free World's Legionnaires and the Blakist 15th Division. It is believed that during this time, about a company of knights used precise attacks to destroy over a battalion's worth of Blake forces between 68 and 70. Despite the odds, the knights lived on until 3076, when an attempt to rescue the now defamed and revealed to be fake Thomas Merrick led to their destruction. The Crusaders came in to assist with the fight, but took losses just getting to Atreus, and upon landing, had to face the 15th Blakist Division. And while they did assist the knights, Romanov's Crusaders were completely destroyed. Sadly, the Knights of the Inner Sphere would get slaughtered when confronted by the Second Free World's Legionnaires and the Eighth Free World's Legionnaires, who had both sided with the word of Blake. The failed rescue of the fake Thomas Merrick and his family would be the last stand of the Knights and the Crusaders. When the war with the word of Blake ended, the remaining equipment of the Knights was gifted to the Republic of the Sphere. It was hoped that Devlin Stone would bring back the Knights as an aspect of the Republic military. This led to the development of a new Republic military force called the Knights of the Republic of the Sphere in 3088. This version of the Knights was given a new emblem and new titles, including Paladin of the Republic. However, this was not a singular elite unit but more like an order of warriors who could lead the Republic forces and inspire the people. Their numbers were great, and by the fall of the Republic, many ordinary soldiers claimed to be knights in hopes of getting mercenary jobs or higher pay at an arena. While this is a nice consolation prize, the Knights of the Inner Sphere never truly returned. The Knights did not last long, and sadly didn't have much impact either. The use of the term knight by members of the Republic of the Sphere became something of a negative as all the successor states and clans battled them while fighting the crumbling Republic to expand their kingdoms out of what was once a beacon of peace. Much like the Knights of the Round Table, the Knights of the Inner Sphere were around for a very short time, but their ideals are still out there for those willing to be a true knight. Camelot was a short dream of a better way to live, and it never returned. That doesn't count. And perhaps it is better to have Camelot be a goal to strive for rather than a living nation. There are many knights, but only a few took center stage in the stories. Still, I tend to find them interesting as they attempt to spread a more civilized ideal of a mech warrior. Sir Paul Masters one of the first knights and the commander of the 1st Regiment. He fought for the people of Gibson, served in Task Force Serpent, and battled on Guizar against the One-Eyed Jax. He is best known for piloting a Phoenix Hawk, but used an anvil as part of Serpent, and replaced it with a clan-built Nobori Nin, aka Huntsman. Sir Crispin Romanov the original commander of the 2nd Battalion, but was transferred and became the commander of Romanov's Crusaders. His preferred mech is unknown, but likely he kept the top-of-the-line mech that was given to him before being transferred. Dame Clarice Boyer She took over for Romanov as the commander of the 2nd Battalion. Years later, she took over as the commander of the 1st Regiment when Sir Paul Masters was promoted to general. 
She took command in 61 as the first knights rebuilt themselves, but sadly ended her career during the bleakest attack in 68. Her mech was likely an albatross. Sir Andre de Souza, the first and only commander of the second regiment. He led the team using small group tactics and maneuverability. His preferred mech is unknown. Sir Rod Train, the commander of the 2nd Battalion of the 2nd Regiment. He was an important member of the team that defeated the False Knights in 57. He piloted several mechs, including a Valkyrie, a Warhammer, but probably got an upgrade to a top-of-the-line unit upon becoming a commander. Sir Hector Molita. He was a Draconis Combine soldier who left and joined the Knights. He was one of the few non-leaguers to become a knight, and served as the XO of the 2nd Regiment around 59. His mech is unknown, but likely used an assault or heavy. Sir Ryan Johansson, a veteran of the Rosselhag Kunzum, but was let go after receiving severe wounds that required a prosthetic left arm and Myomir implants in his legs after a battle with Clan Ghost Bear. He chose to continue his career with Romanov's Crusaders and would rise to the rank of Exo. He likely piloted one of the captured Clan mechs, either a Dragonfly or Battle Cobra. Sir Miguel Lobos Plamados, a captain in the Second Regiment, Miguel preferred to fight solo, taking on evildoers as a wandering hero. His works earned him Hollowvid serials and epic songs. He pilots a thug. One of the things that helped the Knights of the Inner Sphere stand out as a unit is that Thomas Merrick made sure they had top-of-the-line technology in their mechs. This included the near-exclusive use of the Albatross. Most of the pilots used heavier units, but they had enough variety to serve in any conditions. Beyond that, they had a fighter wing for both regiments. Of note, the battalions of each regiment were named after the Knights of the Round Table. First regiment was made up of Lancelot, Galahad, and Gawain. Second regiment was made up of Tristram, Bedivere, and Percival. As for Romanov's Crusaders, they had much less in terms of new technology, with 35% being top of the line at the beginning of their unit, but they got more advanced tech as time went on. There are plenty of books featuring the Knights of the Inner Sphere. Their creation is told in Ideal War, and it is followed up with Star-Lord. They are also a key part of the Twilight of the Clans series. While they aren't in every book, it is an interesting saga to explore for those interested in Task Force Serpent. Beyond that, there are several source books with information about the Knights and a couple more with information about Romanov's Crusaders. I chose to discuss the Knights of the Inner Sphere for two reasons. First off, I'm a House Merrick fan, and the second is that Ideal War was the first Battletech novel I went through. While I had read some short stories, that was the first novel I chose to go for because it was tied to the Free Worlds League. When I did some research on the Knights, Long before I started this series, I wanted to read more of their adventures, but I was also disappointed at how they came to an end. Still, the dark ending of the unit does seem to fit with the end of Arthur and his knights. As of this recording, I have not painted a squad of knights, and honestly, I may never do that. Not because I dislike the knights, because obviously I've talked about how important they are to me, but because I like my units to have a versatility and be usable in as many eras as possible, so that I can adapt to whatever era an opponent would like to play. That being said, I encourage anyone who is on the fence about adding the knights to their mech force to do so, because they are a fun faction due to their chivalry and combat skill. If Catalyst ever decides to do a Knights of the Inner Sphere force pack, this would be my suggestion, alongside cards for Sir Paul Masters and Sir Rod Train. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Battletech Faction Briefings. If you have a request, please let me know in the comments.
and I'll get to it as soon as I can. In the meantime, I'd like to thank all the new subscribers and remind all mech warriors out there to keep your weapons hot and your reactor cool. Until next time, I'll see you at the tavern.